Next up on WTV, changes to the library, new portables, and today's Sports Minute. WTV's daily update starts now. Good morning, Red Hawk Nation. Today is Tuesday, November 6th, and I'm Melody Akbari with today's daily update brought to you by Wingspan TV. In the news recently, a caravan of immigrants have been making its way north from southern Mexico. However, as Alicia Hernandez shows us, not all immigrants choose to walk this path. Sofro Maria Germano is a Venezuelan student who left her native country due to political turmoil. I moved here two years ago from Venezuela um, because my country is not doing their job. The government is not working. It started um, 20 years ago when Chavez was elected for president. As one of the largest exporters of oil in the world, Venezuela prospered because of this. But when Hugo Chavez was elected president of Venezuela in 1999, he started what Venezuelans call Chavismo, which includes policies such as nationalization, social welfare programs, and opposition to neoliberalism. Current president Nicolás Maduro is also a part of the United Socialist Party of Venezuela and continued with the same policies of government that Chavez used, something Germano doesn't agree with. I think the only way that um, Venezuela can get better is changing the government. I moved to Texas because the schools are better here than other states in the United States. Despite her decision to leave her native land for what her family thought was better opportunity in Texas, Germano won't say no to her return in South America. I would like to stay here until Venezuela gets better, um, and then I can think of going back. Reporting for WTV, I'm Alicia Hernandez. To keep up with the current needs and wants of students, the library is undergoing some changes. WTV's Manuki Maidis takes a look at what you'll see. The library has long been home to a wide assortment of media, such as books, laptops, newspapers, and magazines. While there are new faces, such as librarian Chelsea Hamilton, some other things may be phased out. You have the books, obviously. Um, we have all of the databases that run through Mac and Via. We have lots of great resources in there. You have, um, we have magazines right now. We're working on kind of getting those out because they're more current, um, not really usable for research, and not a lot of people even know that we have magazines, so we're working on getting rid of those. But um, because they're not being checked out or read or used, that's a lot of money that the library could use purchasing new books and working with databases and finding new comfortable furniture and decorating and all the stuff that can be more better used for students who come into the library. But whatever the reason, Hamilton encourages students to visit the library and utilize its resources. The, the benefit of researching in a library as opposed to researching at home is there's always someone to ask. So you can either ask me or there are other teachers in here and we can help direct you to databases, websites, books. We can help clarify things. It's always better, I think, to work in an area with other people that you can help bounce ideas also, off of than working in isolation. This is Manuki Maidis reporting for WTV. This year, Fisco ISD brought new portables to replace old buildings. WTV's Madigan Gunia has a story. Beyond the walls of the school, there are two portables, each one with two classrooms, adding much needed space to the campus. But unlike the main building, sometimes the portables are replaced, and that's what happened over the summer as the district bought two new portables. The portables were switched out by our district because they felt that we needed to have um, our own portables. The ones that were here before were ones that were rented from a company. So the district purchased their own and replaced them with ours. This is Madigan Gunia reporting for WTV. In a new weekly segment, WTV's TJ Krulowitz puts students and staff to the test and finds out what they do and do not know. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wingspan Trivia. I'm your host TJ Krulowitz and today we're going to be testing students' knowledge on geography. Okay, so I'm here with... Coach Michael. Miss Nelkin. Raphael. Chica Ugo. Aaron Rodgers. Sammy. Jalen Abi. What ocean is on the east coast of America? Atlantic. Pacific Ocean. Can you tell me what's on the west coast of America? Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic. How many Great Lakes are there? Four. Five. Four. 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 What is the longest river in the United States? The Mississippi. Oh, I think it's the Mississippi River. Amazon River. Mississippi. The Colorado. Mississippi. Name a country that borders France. 
Italy. Spain. Germany. Uh, Germany. Espana. Name the seven continents. North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe, Asia, Africa. What's the other one? You don't know when you're asking me? No. Uh, Central America, question mark. Right now? Oh my goodness. Asia, Europe, uh, North America, South America, Antarctica. All of a sudden I can't think. Australia. What am I missing? Asia, North America, South America, Europe, Antarctica, Australia. What's the seventh? Um, Africa, duh. What state is the city of Kansas City in? What state? Yeah. Kansas. It's, I think it's in Missouri and Kansas. It's part of Kansas, but it's part of another state too. Missouri. Colorado. WTV Sports brings you a look at what's happening in campus sports. Girls basketball tipped off its home opener last night, taking on the 6A Plano West Wolves at the nest. The Wolves jumped out to an early lead, 23-12 at the end of the first. But the Redhawks would bounce back with an 11-0 second quarter, leaving the teams tied at 33 entering the half. The back and forth continued in the third quarter, with the Wolves taking the one-point lead heading to the fourth. From there, Plano West slowly pulled away, taking the win 53-46. The volleyball team has its biggest match of the season tonight as they take on the perennial powerhouse Lovejoy in the third round of the playoffs. Lovejoy enters the match as the top 5A team in the Dallas Morning News rankings, with the Redhawks right behind them at number 2. The Redhawks are coming into the match with an overall record of 31-9, rivaling Lovejoy's 43-6. The two teams met earlier this year with Lovejoy getting the 2-0 win. Tonight's match is at Berkner High School in Richardson starting at 7.30. Reporting from WTV, this is Walker Shibby. If you are looking for more from Wingspan, you can follow us at Liberty Wingspan on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or visit our award-winning website, libertywingspan.com. WTV's Wade Glover has today's announcements. Today is election day for the 2018 midterm elections. Voters can make their decision in the hallway behind the auditorium. All students can vote in the mock election between Ted Cruz and Beto O'Rourke today during lunches. NHS has a meeting tomorrow before school at 8.30 or during advisory in the auditorium. Students can donate to Treats for Troops in the Rotunda this week. All donations will go to troops overseas. Students can nominate their peers or teachers to be Righteous Red Hawks for exemplifying the school values. Find a flyer in the hallway with the QR code to submit your nomination. All boys interested in playing soccer who are not currently in the class must see Coach Kaiser in room C-112 before school or during advisory to try out. That's it for today's daily update. This has been Melody Akvari for Wingspan TV.